Welcome to the, what, I don't even remember what video this is on thermal physics. This is unit two. And in this video, we're going to talk about phase transitions. In the last video, we learned, oh, first let me say, uh, so we're, this is an IB class, right? And uh, IB class is international, taught all over the world. Someone told me, I think someone once told me, and I don't know if this person has any idea, but I think one person once told me that uh, a lot of the curricula are developed in Britain, right, England. So because of this shaky memory I have of something which is probably hearsay, uh, it's my excuse to talk in a British accent for part of the video. Yes, I will. Okay. In the last video, we learned that adding thermal energy can cause a substance to rise in temperature. Okay, this is not working. In the last video, we learned that adding thermal energy, adding heat, causes a, substan a substance to rise in temperature. Right? If you heat up your water, the temperature goes up. But in certain special situations, that doesn't happen. You add heat, and the temperature doesn't rise. Here's an example. Let's say you have a refrigerator, your refrigerator, there's the fridge on the bottom and the freezer on the top, and inside the freezer, let's say it's zero degrees Celsius. You know why I've chosen that value, you'll see, hold on, we'll get there. So zero degrees, you take an ice cube out of the freezer and you put it into, let's say we have a skillet here, so before you take the ice cube out, you heat the skillet the stove. So you heat the skillet like on medium heat and then you turn off the heat and as soon as you turn off the heat you take an ice cube out of your freezer at zero degrees and you put it in the skillet. So the temperature of the ice cube is zero degrees. The temperature of the skillet is, I don't know, maybe it's pretty hot. Maybe it's 150 degrees or something. And because these objects have different temperatures and they're in thermal contact, I mean, they're touching in this case, that qualifies as thermal contact. Because of those two things, there is an exchange of thermal energy from the hotter object to the colder object. That's the direction, quote unquote, of our exchange. And you watch this happen. You watch the energy go from the skillet to the cube, and the temperature doesn't change. It's shocking. <gasps> Gasp. So what's happening? Where? I mean, what's happening to that energy if it's not causing the temperature to rise? What's it doing? Here's what it's doing. You might know that what happens to the ice cube, it melts. It melts into water at zero degrees. So when a substance is changing phase, the thermal energy that's gained or lost doesn't change the temperature. During phase transitions, thermal energy, let's just say Q, thermal energy Q, Q that's gained or lost doesn't change the temperature. Instead, here's what happens. If it's not changing the temperature, what's happening? The added or lost in some cases thermal energy causes the molecules separation, how far apart they are, to change. That's what happens. For our ice cube, the ice cube's molecules start out like this. Like this. They're all very nice and ordered. They have these bonds, chemical bonds, which we represent with lines, right? And they're all pretty close together. 
Then we add thermal energy. Thermal energy is added to the ice cube. And remember, these things are moving around. They're vibrating in the case of a solid. They're not really rotating. I said they're rotating. Some do, but most, most molecules of a solid do not rotate. They just vibrate. So they're rotating. They have some amount of Ke. And I'll call it Ke1. And after we add all of this heat from the skillet, added heat. After we add that heat, what's the difference at the end? Well, the only difference is that now they're not as close together as they were. They're farther apart. In, chemi in chemistry, you say that the bonds are broken. Very fancy. In physics, we're just going to say they're farther apart. Their separation distance is larger. Hmm, these look like they're still too close. So they get farther apart. They become a solid, a uh, liquid rather. I need to show these even farther, don't I? On average, they're farther apart from the adjacent molecules. And now they're a liquid. But they're still going as fast as they were before. The kinetic energy is the same. So they still vibrate as much. Ke1, the kinetic energy during the solid state equals the kinetic energy after they've just finished melting. So there are two kinds of phase transitions, two categories rather, two categories for phase transitions. One is where heat, thermal energy, is gained by the substance transitioning. The other is where, the other category is where heat is lost. So if you take an ice cube, and you heat it up, you add thermal energy, it gains thermal energy, it becomes a liquid, it becomes water. When you go from solid to liquid, we call it melting, and it's an example where heat is gained, thermal energy is gained. If you do the opposite, start with uh, water, you have to put your water into a really cold environment, like a freezer, to get it to turn into a solid. So when it goes into the freezer, it loses thermal energy, that water loses thermal energy, in order to freeze. That is an example where Q is lost, thermal energy is lost. Liquid to solid. And there's two names, so let's make room for both. The first is freezing, and the next is fusion. What if you have a pot of water, and you're heating your water, and then after a little while it starts turning into steam? Steam is a gas. What you're doing is you're adding energy, adding thermal energy, and you're going from the liquid state, or the liquid phase, to the gaseous, or gaseous phase. We'll just, I'll just put gas. And we call that boiling, when you add the heat to make that transition. But you could also do the opposite. You could start with a gas and transition to liquid phase. And we call that condensing. That's what happens when the water particles, the gaseous water particles in the air, form little beads of water, like on the outside of your glass. That's called condensing. Or when dew forms on leaves, that can sometimes be an effect of condensing. These are the phase transitions we will study. That's it. That's the full list of the ones that we need to know. There's one final thing to talk about. We know that when a substance gains or loses thermal energy, one of two things happens. When you add or remove Q, the first thing that might happen, they're not really ordered, so let me just do A and B. One thing that might happen is the temperature changes. 
the other thing that can happen, the phase might change. The phase changes. That's what happens when you add or remove heat, uh, thermal energy, to a substance. Either its temperature changes or its phase changes, but never both at the same time. That's just not how it works. You don't get farther, those molecules don't get farther apart and faster at the same time. So we are always doing one or the other, and now we finally get to tie this back into what we know about internal energy. Remember, internal energy is the total kinetic energy of all molecules plus the total potential energy of all molecules. So just to be clear, here's what I want to ask, and this is the last thing in this video. What happens to the internal energy? How does the en internal energy change when A occurs, when temperature changes? And how does the internal energy change when B occurs, when the phase changes? That's what we look at next. To figure it out, I have a fancy chart. This will help us organize what's happening, the diff different things that happen. So if we add, let's look at the first one. If we add Q, and that means we're adding energy, and the phase doesn't change, what happens? The temperature increases. If the temperature increases, what's happening to the internal energy? Well, the internal energy is uh, consists of kinetic and potential, and remember, temperature is proportional to the kinetic energy of the molecules. So if all of the molecules have a rise in their kinetic energy as the temperature rises, then the total kinetic energy of all the molecules will also rise. So the kinetic energy increases. If you remove thermal energy, then the temperature decreases as long as there's no phase transition. T decreases. And if the temperature decreases, then the kinetic energy is decreasing. Kinetic energy decreases. What if we add thermal energy during a phase transition? Here's what that thermal energy added does the separation between molecules, let's say separation distance, increases. And when the separation distance increases, the potential energy increases. Just like when you take a pen or a pencil or ball and you raise it higher off the ground. When you increase that separation, you increase the potential energy. And the last thing, what if we lose thermal energy, an object uh, loses thermal energy during a phase transition, like freezing? Well, the separation distance between neighboring molecules, they get closer. Neighboring molecules get closer. And the potential energy as a result decreases.